Hi, my name is Kmi Townsend. The purpose of my project is to inform the design of a wearable assistive device that will make up for muscle weakness in elderly people, specifically during sit-to-stand. Wearable assistive devices have the potential to improve and extend quality of life for elderly people. The two questions I will strive to answer are 1. What joint torques occur at the ankle, knee, and hip during sit-to-stand? 2. What joint torques at the ankle, knee, or hip is required for an assistive device to support movement of an elderly person in sit-to-stand? I went about finding the evolution of joint torques in a sit-to-stand by first invoking inverse dynamics on kinematics data that I found in the literature, so as to use later to compare against the optimizer solution. Then I set up the covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy optimizer, including tuning, objective function, the model constraints, and the project code, which was derived from Carmichael's standing long jump optimizer. Finally, I extracted the joint torques from the optimized solution. In the literature, I found 20 data points over 2 seconds of a sit-to-stand for each of the angles defined in the top right figure. Using the angle definitions, I crunched the numbers into OpenSim where I used the inverse dynamics tool to extract the baseline joint torques for later comparison. While this data is an important starting point, using this method alone cannot predict how an exosuit may affect kinematics. On the other hand, optimization can help us do this. This is the optimization workflow that I inherited from Carmichael. Each of the yellow boxes is a tool or a process that I used on a file denoted as unboxed. Observing the discrepancies between the animation and the code is where I spend most of my time troubleshooting. This slide is intended as a reminder of what type of optimizer that was used, a covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy. My work dealt with the model parameters and constraints, as well as the objective function. It's important to note that to start, the Ashby model is constrained at the heel and toe such that the foot does not move throughout the simulation and that the Ashby model has muscle-like coordinate actuators at the ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, and elbow. Finally, there's no particularly easy way to terminate this particular simulation since it would be based on the model's final state, which in our case, that's the state of standing, which is complicated to define and so instead I hard-coded a 0.5 seconds of simulation time into the program. I define the objective function with the first term to define the standing position. The alignment error minimizes the mean squared error of the horizontal difference between the position of the joint and the position of the heel, so that the heel, knee, hip, and shoulder joints will be vertically aligned. However, with just this definition for the final standing state, the optimizer found a particular local minimum solution shown here. In order to avoid this minimum, I included another parameter to define the final standing state, which was a minimum height turn. When the difference between the center of mass of the model and the vertical heel position was less than 0.9 meters, the objective function was penalized. On the other hand, as soon as the model reached the minimum height, the term went to zero. Now, we get the following solution. This still doesn't look quite right because the model is not realistic. It lacks a seat, so it stands up as though it were solving a balancing problem. Therefore, I added a C-constraint, as well as a C-constraint release event handler that is triggered when the vertical forces at the hip reach zero. This way, the model has a seat on which it may rest until it finally stands. Using the following objective function parameters, model and simulation constraints, the optimizer was able to perform a semblance of sit to stand. From this kinematics of the optimized motion, I was able to extract the joint flexions as well as the joint torques. This is a good start for informing the design of a wearable exosuit. However, there is more work to be done. First, I will refine the objective function and constraints by adding a zero velocity and zero acceleration constraint for the final standing position, penalizing for negative output forces at, toe, at the toe and heel constraints, which intuitively speaking would mean that the model's foot would be leveraging the ground to stand up, Minimizing the, uh, the usage of the muscle-like coordinate actuators, defining a simulation termination event handler so as to make the simulation time variable, and thus finally minimizing the simulation time. Second, I will make a weakened model relearn sit to stand with and without the exosuit added, which would be modeled as an active controls on top of the original muscle-like coordinate actuators. Finally, I will extract the joint torques from these optimized motions from the elderly model and, for validation, compare them against the healthy model sit-to-stand joint torques as well as the joint torques previously derived from the experimentally gathered kinematics data. Thank you to Carmichael, Calvin, the teaching team, all of the neuromuscular biomechanics lab, as well as the class.